folks, and welcome to another episode of Messy Hair News. I'm your host, Mrs. Messy Hair. On today's episode, we received a question from Daniela Bodo. Daniela asks, Can you explain to me the science behind how musical instruments make sound? I have to do a project on that topic and I don't know where to start. Well, folks, Mrs. Messy Hair just so happens to play the piano and the violin, so I guess today's episode of Messy Hair News is a piece of cake for me. So, let's start with how a piano works, shall we? Believe it or not, a piano is a string instrument. Well, folks, I know what you're thinking. How can a piano be a string instrument if you don't even pluck or bow strings? Well, the strings in the piano are actually inside, as you can see. And if you look inside, you will also see a something or other like this on top of each of the strings. These are called the dampers. As you press a key, a hammer hits the string from underneath and makes the string vibrate. The damper lifts up, allowing the string to continue to vibrate and make a beautiful sound. But as you let go of the key, the damper comes back onto the string and stops the vibrating. This prevents the string from continuing to sound. Anyway, I think I might be psychic. I'm pretty sure I actually know what you're thinking. How does the pedal make the string keep on making sound? Well, the pedal is somehow connected to the dampers and all the pedal does is lifts up all the dampers and keeps them from going back onto the strings. Now, let's move into the violin, shall we? So, as you can see, the violin is obviously a string instrument because it has four strings. There's the G string, the D string, the A string, and the E string, and they are all tuned to different notes. So anyways, the higher the string is, the faster the string will vibrate, and that means that the frequency is higher also. Did you notice that the string looks a little bit fuzzy? Yep, that's because the string is vibrating. This is a bow. The hair on the bow is called horse hair and the horse hair has a stuff called rosin which keeps the bow from being super slippery. Cause if the bow is slippery, then you won't get that sound, that, that beautiful sound that a violin makes. When you place your fingers on the fingerboard, that's this long black board thingy that's across the neck of the violin. The string is shortened, creating a higher note. Like this. As for wind instruments, wind instruments have a wooden thingy called a reed. Well, you might be thinking, what's the point of having a reed if there's already a mouthpiece? Well, the mouthpiece doesn't do the vibrating. The purpose of the mouthpiece is so that your mouth has something to grip onto. The reed attaches to the mouthpiece and vibrates when you blow into the instrument. So now I'm going to be talking about harmonics. So harmonics are just notes played by lightly touching your finger on the string, like this. When you play just the string and not use the fingerboard at all, that's called an open string. And when you combine the open string's frequency and the mode of vibration, that's called the fundamental. The harmonic series is the set of harmonics on the string. So in a harmonic series, there's the, the fundamental, which is also called the first harmonic. And in this picture, that's the blue line. And there's also the second harmonic, which is the green line and the reason why that's the green line is because as you can see for each blue little mountain thing there are two green mountain things and the third harmonic is the pink line and for each blue mountain thing there is three little um there's three pink mountain things and i think you get the picture now even though a piano is a string instrument, a piano does sound different from other string instruments. One thing that makes a piano sound unique is the fact that the string stiffness causes the harmonics to be a bit less than two and three times the string's fundamental frequency. And, yeah, of course, all musical instruments go out of tune at some point. So now, I'm going to be talking about 
the different ways that musical instruments can go out of tune. Let's take a look at that. If an instrument is old or misconfigured, the instrument can tend to go out of tune easier. Or the weather can be a cause of the instrument going out of tune because the temperature outside can mess with the wood on string instruments and cause the wood to shift around a little bit. The thing that depends on the fundamental frequency of a string is how tight or loose the string is pulled and heat or humidity can tighten or loosen the string. So that means if you leave your instrument in heat or humidity, then you'll have to mess around with those tuning pegs quite a lot when you go to practice your instrument. When exposed to heat or cold, the metal and wind instruments can grow or shrink, which changes the fundamental frequency of the air vibrating and puts it out of tune. Well, I guess it's time for me to talk about how the sound gets transmitted. In string instruments, the first thing that happens is the sound gets transmitted from the string to the top plate and the bridge is the part that transports the sound from the string to the top plate. There's a stick inside the instrument called a sound post and all the sound post does is just transports the sound from the top plate to the bottom plate. The resonance is the natural frequency at which something vibrates. For example, the A string's resonance is an A. In a violin there are two things that amplify the sound, the air inside the violin and the wood. Good violins have the resonant frequency of the air in the wood and should be equal to the A and D strings pitches. If the resonant frequencies are not where they are supposed to be, then some notes have better tone and quality than others. On a piano, when you hit a key and hold the key down, the volume starts to decay. However, the volume doesn't just decay in an ordinary way. What happens is the sound starts to die down fast and then the decaying of the volume gets slower and slower, like this. Some people say that a piano has singing quality. If you look inside a piano, you can see that there are three strings for each key. However, each string is a little bit out of tune since nobody wants to spend forever trying to make each string perfectly in tune because ain't nobody got time for that. As a result, the strings are not vibrating together during the entire note. Whenever the strings aren't vibrating together, the bridge lends a helping hand to the strings and vice versa. This is also the cause of the slow decay. Last, but certainly not least, I'm going to be talking about the reason why different musical instruments sound different. Now let's take a look at that. Timbre is the loudness of the harmonics. Timbre plays an important role in why all musical instruments sound different. Different instruments have different loudnesses of their harmonics. One reason why different musical instruments sound different is because all instruments have different ways of vibrating. Some instruments vibrate when being struck with a stick, some vibrate when air is blown, and some have strings that vibrate. Another reason is because some instruments might be higher or lower than others. For example, a violin and a viola sound different because the violin has a string that the viola doesn't have and vice versa. The violin has the E string and the viola has the C string. And finally, that brings me to another reason why all musical instruments sound different. The size of the instrument affects how high or low the instrument is. For example, a violin plays higher notes than, say, a cello does. For one thing, a violin has shorter and thinner strings than a cello does. If you cut a string in half, like this, the string will be an octave higher than the original string. Also, Shorter and thinner strings tend to vibrate faster, producing higher notes. <sighs> well, folks, sad to say, that concludes tonight's episode of Messy Hair News. But before I go, I would like to say a few things. Got a question you would like me to answer in a future episode? Well, if so, you can email us your question at don'temailus at don'temailus.com. Or you can call us. Our phone number is 1-800. This is not a real number, so do not call. So, yeah, and on top.
tomorrow's episode, we will be talking about... Sorry, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Well, folks, don't forget to tune in tomorrow.